Exploit means gather and use resources and improve the efficiency of that usage. Before we begin discussing exploitation in Endospace 2, I would like to say that a lot of people consider food, industry, science, dust and influence to be considered resources, but I prefer to treat them separately. Instead, in this episode, we're going to focus on luxuries and strategic resources. All of these you can see at the top left corner of your screen. This is your strategics, titanium, hyperium, adamantium, antimatter, orichalcyx, and quadrinix. And the luxuries can be seen from your economy screen. You see all the different luxuries for all the different feed Z boosts they provide. Let's begin. Strategic resources are split into three tiers. Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3. The first one are common, they are titanium and hyperium. The second one are uncommon, they are adamantium and antimatter. The last one is a rare, and it's the orichalcyx and quadrinix. To be able to see these, uh, these resources, you'll need to unlock Tier 3 and 4 of the Science and Exploration tech tree. To be able to exploit them, you'll need to have certain technologies on the economy and trade tech tree. For example, titanium is titanium refining, tier 1. And adamantium is tier 3, adamantium refining. Tier 4 will, uh, will give you access to technology to exploit the rare resources. Every deposit can give you 1, 3 or 5 units of each strategic per turn as base yield. You can have technology on top of that will, that will give you more. For example, this is an average deposit, but because I've got extra improvements on my system, I gain 5 quadrinix per turn. Strategic resources, as their name indicates, are key in Endless Space 2 and you want to get some. They are used in 5 different ways. First one, probably the one you're going to use the most, is to equip your different ship. So, they will provide you with the relevant technologies, better modules for defense, attack, and support modules. Equipping your ships with these will make their cost more and higher in terms of strategics that you need to use to build the ship. Pretty straightforward. The more strategics you have, the better the army you get. The other use you can have for strategics is when you want to build some improvements. For example, if I want to build the graviton shielded laboratories, I'll need industry and five hyperiums. Be careful when you select a technology or uh, an improvement that needs um, a strategy. Make sure you have enough in your empire to be able to build the improvement. Another way of using strategics into is to improve your troops. You can manage that from here and you've got three types of troops. Infantry, armor, air. All of them can be upgraded through dust and strategics. For example, here I can spend 400 dust, 20 titanium, 20 hyperium to give a 20% infantry damage bonus on all of my infantry troops. I can do the same for my armor, armor using tier 2 resources and I can improve my air troops using tier 3 resources. Another way of using strategics is in diplomacy. It's very important because you can trade them and usually AIs will think it's a very good deal to get some strategics. For example, I could probably trade these, give them a bit more original kicks for a technology and they would probably accept at some point. Obviously, they're not interested right now. The last thing that strategics are used, but it's already a very good number of use cases we've, we've seen, is to build this wonder. To achieve a wonder victory, you'll need to build a certain number of a certain improvement. In this case, the obelisk of all space-time. To build this one, you'll need 10,000 industry, 125 titanium, 125 hyperium, 80 adamantium, 80 antimatter, 40 quadrinix, and 40 original kicks. That's a lot, and it has been buffed in the latest patch. I think it's actually, though, still a good way to win the game if you've got great industry and if you've got access to all the different resources in the game. 
Luxury Resources works the same way as Strategic Resources, as in you need to unlock Tier 3 and 4 of the Science and Exploration Tech Tree to be able to see them. The difference is you don't need specific technologies to exploit them. You will get them as soon as they are in your empire. An average deposit will only grant you 2 units, whereas an abundant one will you give you 3 units and a poor one will only give you 1 unit. You can see all of your luxury resources in the economy screen and you can see that they are separated into three tiers, the top line, the second line and the third lines. This will yield you better bonuses and obviously tier 3 are better than tier 2 which are better than tier 1 in luxury resources. Luxury resources are very important in the game but they're probably not as important as strategics. However, they are mainly used for two things, system development. As you can see here, you can specific, specify a certain luxury deposit to attach to a level of your system development. That will grant your system a bonus. For example, here, I'm going to get plus two approval per population on planets when I level up to the system to level two. For each level, you can take one, two or three luxury resources, and you'll need a lot of these resources to be able to level up to level four. So make sure to pick these luxuries quite carefully. And if you by any chance have got tier 3 resources, it would be very advised to use them because they grant a very good bonus. For example, protospores will give you plus 15% science per system level on system. So if you count correctly on level 4, that gives you a plus 45 bonus on science, which is very, very good. The other thing you can use luxury resources for is for managing your population. For example here, I can give some luxuries to the Hisho population and that will give their population a boost, which means they, are, they will get higher chances to spawn in your empire. That is very good. For example, if you play Horatio and you want to splice genes of minor factions, you want a lot of population from these minor factions. So these luxuries are going to be very efficient and useful to get diversity in your empire. If you've got a lot of luxuries and you don't really know what to make, because for example you've got you've leveled up all your all of your systems, or you don't know you've got a very big production of a given resource, don't forget that you can use them as part of your diplomacy, or you can sell them in the marketplace. For example, I could go here, select my transvine and say I want to sell 100 units of them, that gives me a good 1.3k of dust, which is better than nothing really, it's better than having them sitting in your vault, in your empire. Overall in Endless Space 2, I would say that strategic resources are essential, and luxury resources are very important. If you want to achieve a conquest victory or a wonder victory, you'll need a lot of strategics. If you don't have access to strategics, I would ask you to revise your plan and maybe aim for a economy or scientific victory. If your deposits are poor in your empire and you need a lot of resources, don't worry, you can always tech up and find technologies and improvements that will help you toward your goal. For example, you can use the Slag and Sludge Center, the Expanded Mines, or the Mexud Quarter to get between plus one and plus two of strategic luxury resources that will give you enough production per turn to build the army you want. One last thing I would say is if you don't know which one to pick between the different strategic resources, always go for the higher tier. And between Titan and an Imperium, it's pretty similar, so do not focus on one, but grab the two if you have the choice. That's it for resources in Endless Space 2. I hope to see you soon in our next episode about extermination. Goodbye.